Welcome back, Hokie Nation, to this edition of TSL Today. The first segment, we talked both men's and women's hoops, and now it's time to talk Virginia Tech baseball. So for that, we brought on our Hokie ball guru, Mr. Chris Hirons. Chris, thanks for hopping on. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. So I want to focus on this past weekend. It was a tough start for Virginia Tech in conference play, 2-8 and eight in ACC play. So how important was it for the Hokies to secure the weekend series over Virginia and win the final two games? I mean, I think it was extremely important. I mean, if they don't win, you know, Saturday and Sunday, they're looking at a 2-10 and 10 record in conference play. And, you know, you get in the, the part where maybe they're not inclu- in, your, in the conversation, maybe they're not included in the ACC baseball championship. So I think, I think it was important there. And, you know, the last two games maybe kind of turned their season around because – they are better than the record. I know at some point, yes, you do become your record, but they've lost a ton of close games lately. Um, they're better than their record, all that. The Cavaliers came into the weekend number five overall, number five in the AP poll, or D1 baseball, D1 baseball. I want to say. They were 23-2, and two, is that correct? Yeah, 23-2. Best and two. start in program history, which is crazy for them considering their long-winded history. I don't know if it's the best start, and I can't say... Um, I think I think I may have heard Jake or Evan say that on the radio. I don't know. I, I, I don't know that answer. Maybe it is, you know... Two losses in your first 25 games, yeah, probably it's your best start in program history. But, yeah, I mean, Tech doubled up their losses this weekend. I mean, it was – and they did in convincing fashion, too. Like, it wasn't like, you know, Tech kind of squeaked by or, you know, they got lucky here and there. But, I mean, the offense was rolling. The pitching, for the most part, was pretty good on – from the last four or five innings on Friday all the way through the weekend. And it was the first time that Tech has taken back-to-back series from UVA since 99-2000. Is that correct? Yeah, so – I want to say it goes back to the 80s for a weekend series, okay. maybe like 85. Because they weren't in the ACC then, so yeah, that would yeah. make sense. And, yeah. then, and then in 99-2000, they, like, they played two midweek series or something like that. Well, the Hokies dropped the opener 9-5 to on Friday evening, then bounced back and took the following two, 12-10 in a slugfest on Saturday, and secured a 12-7 to victory on Sunday. Offensively, the uh, the Hokies were dynamite down the stretch, particularly on Saturday and Sunday. Jack Curley, a combined 7 of 10 from the dish, going yard three times and recording eight RBIs. How key was he to Virginia Tech's offense? I mean, he he was kind of their catalyst to, you know, starting. I talked to him on Saturday and he said, yeah, you know, they, they went... They lost nine to nothing or nine to five on Friday, but they kind of won the back half of the Friday game, and so I think that's kind of what led their confidence over to Saturday and Sunday, um, especially in the Sunday game where Hurley, Hurley went yard twice. Uh, he hit seven homers in the last seven games. Um, his first homer that gave Tech, I think, it was a seven to six lead. Lead. It reminded me of last year's Sunday game um, where Tech, you know, the series was tied at one one and. Tech had come down from a four nothing deficit yesterday. They come back from a three nothing deficit, then a four or five to four deficit, then a six to five deficit. I think it was, um, and last year. So Gavin Cross anyway uh, hits the go ahead homer um, in a four to four game, and Hurley kind of did the same thing yesterday, except he put the Hokies on top with a two run homer um, in that game. Yeah, I remember that. That was a big series in Charlottesville last year. First time the Hokies won a series against UVA in Blacksburg since 2015, too. That was a sweep for the Hokies then, so I thought that was pretty interesting to think about. Looking at the box score here, Garrett Michelle also went deep on Saturday. Tex Bolpen, they did play around a little bit on Saturday, but Jonah Herney was able to lock it down. Then on Sunday, both Brody Doné and Chris Canizaro also left the yard. I know Canizaro, the Bucknell transfer, had been dealing with a little bit of a hand issue. Is that correct? A hand issue? Yeah, a bone bruise on his right a hand. A bone it was, bruise? It was taped up yesterday still. So how big was it to get him back into the lineup after his fantastic start to 2023? Yeah, I mean, he was hitting 500 going into ACC play. I'm not sure when the injury was sustained. You know, that hasn't kind of been revealed by uh, either Canizero or uh, Coach John Sheff. But I think it was important, you know, he was kind of getting going during the Pitt series. Uh, he hit a home run on the during the Saturday game. And then, you know, he was kind of in and out of the lineup. Um, I don't think he played at VMI. He pinch hit on Friday night, I think. Maybe it was Saturday mm-hmm. but um, against UVA. But he, uh, he texted Kurt Elbin uh, on Saturday night and said, you know, I'm going to play tomorrow. You know, I think it's important that my bat's in the lineup. I think it's important that, you know, we try to take this series. So 
it's it's good to get him going. You know, he's kind of got to be the X factor. I know it, coming into the year, people were like, you know, you got to replace Gavin Cross in some way. And no, K- Chris Canizero was never going to be da- Gavin Cross, but you know, no. you got to you got to replace that production some way, and that's exactly what Chris has done. At some point, though, you got to cool down from hitting around 500, <laughs> though. So eventually, it was going to happen. John Shep, I noticed, and and you were very apparent about it on Twitter. Mixed up the starting nine quite a bit this week, and I guess you're trying to shake things up. You're looking for a spark. Is it fair to say he's kind of found his nine or ten guys to roll with the rest of the way? I think so. I think if he had his option, he would play, you know, 11, 12 guys because you have Eddie Isert, who wasn't in the lineup on Saturday mm-hmm. or on Sunday, who was in the lineup on Friday and Saturday, and then you have Gary Giebel, whose bat has been coming around. Um, he's a very solid defensive catcher, but... I think, you know, when they put Carson Jones at the top of the lineup, he had a slow start to the season, but, you know, in his last seven, eight games, or maybe even since the Boston College series, um, you know, his his bet has come around. He's hitting the high 350s since maybe his last, like, 10, 12 games, something like that. You know, I think... I think it was important that they found their, you know, nine or 10 or 11 guys that they want to roll out because especially as you get down the stretch and into, you know, the mid season of the ACC, you know, you want to have that, that starting lineup every day that knows how to play, play, you know, what production you're getting for everyone. And is it fair to say you're just now looking, Virginia Tech is just now looking for more consistency now with the pitching staff, particularly the starting rotation. Is that something fair to say? Yeah, I think so. Um, they they had been getting better starts from Griffin Green, who was roughed up in the first few weeks of the season. Um, I know he gave up six runs against UVA, but his, his two or three starts prior to that, you know, he had given up two runs and I think five innings in um, each of those two or three starts uh, going back to either the Boston College or the Miami series. Drew Hackenberg, I know, was hit around a little bit, but, you know, his, his arm won't have coming around. There's a reason mm-hmm. he's an LB draft prospect for a reason. Yeah. And then Anthony Darguez, you know, he, he'll give you um, – most times three, four, five innings of, you know, one or two run ball. You mentioned it earlier on. This could potentially kickstart the Hokies this season, according to you. When you look at the grand scheme of things, where does Virginia Tech stand in the NCAA tournament picture? And how important are the next two weekend series with Duke down in Durham this weekend and then Georgia Tech and Blacksburg here in two weeks? So I don't think they're in must win territory yet or the must sweep territory. I'll take that back. I think it's very, very important that they win the next two series. Mm -hmm. I think right now, if you were to do a bracketology, I'm not sure when D1 Baseball comes out with theirs, but my guess is that either the Hokies are on the bubble or they're a three seed and, you know, kind of the lower um, seeds. But I think it's pretty pretty important that they they win the next two series. You know, they're not in sweep territory, but, you know, you you take the next two series and, you know, you're right back at 500 in conference play. Right now, Virginia Tech would actually be, I forgot about the ACC Baseball Championship. They would be the last team in right now in Durham in late May. They're currently last in the Coastal at 4-8 in conference play. Virginia leads the way at 8-4. Then Miami is tied with them. North Carolina 6-4. Georgia Tech 6-6. Pitt is 4-6 on the other side. Florida State 3-9 in conference play. Clemson 2-7. So, yeah, it's probably pretty important to get these next two weekends. Are you going down to Durham this weekend? No, I don't think I am. Maybe I'll go down for the Saturday and Sun- or Sunday game if they end up taking Friday or Saturday's game. Maybe I'll end up sticking around for the Sunday game. Well, we always talk about on the podcast and on TSL Today, what are we plugging baseball-wise? What's coming up on TSL Today the next two weeks for Tech Baseball? Um, basically, kind of just recaps. Obviously, you have today's TSL Today, and if they keep winning, hopefully I'm back here next week. No midweek game this week, correct? No midweek game this so week. So at Duke, Liberty, Georgia Tech, correct? Yes, I think so. Cool. Well, Chris, thank you so much for having on. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. That's Chris Hirons. I'm Carter Hill. Thanks to Giovanni Heater for producing Behind the Scenes. And thanks to David Cunningham for hopping on in the first segment. It's TSL Today on a Monday from Blacksburg. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you on Wednesday.